Hey guys, Anthony here, Bibles and Barbells. I am here uh, today, Monday, April 20th, 2020. I'm looking at an article in the New American Magazine. I just wanted to make a few comments on it and uh, give some of my uh, thoughts and opinions. And then uh, see what you guys think. Uh, it's entitled, Anti-Lockdown Organizer Arrested as Left-Right COVID-19 Divide Intensifies. Um, and it goes on to say, um, it was written, I guess it was posted today. Um, Far from uniting America as 9-11 temporarily did, the Wuhan virus pandemic is further illustrating her profound political divide. Um, in fact, as anti-lockdown protests arise across the nation, left-wing activists dropped makeshift body bags in front of President uh, Trump's properties. Moreover, authorities under a governor who recently said that the Bill of Rights was above his pay grade. I believe that was a New Jersey governor uh, that said that. I think I, I saw him say that. Uh, he did say that, and I saw that interview. Um, so, virus mitigation measures more seriously. So, the Daily Mail provided a good summary of the current division. Protesters, protesters chanted fire Fauci at a coronavirus lockdown in Austin, Texas on Saturday. They were referring to Anthony Fauci, the um, country's top immunologist and infectious disease expert. Kim Pagan of Toms River, New Jersey, was arrested for organizing the anti-lockdown rally in Trenton. And Governor Phil Murphy of New Jersey, I believe that's who I saw say that, that quote about the um, the uh, Bill of Rights first implemented the coronavirus emergency orders last month. Uh, several COVID-19 anti-lockdown protests were held by citizens around the United States on Friday. I think um, many of us have saw some of the coverage on the news. Uh, places like New Hampshire, Maryland, Virginia, and New Jersey. I believe I saw one last night in Washington State um, also uh, that went well. Anti-Trump activists again laid body bags in front of Trump's properties to protest his outbreak response. President Trump doubled down on his tweets to liberate Minnesota, Michigan, and Virginia. Um, he told reporters at Friday's uh, White House briefing that the Democratic governors in those three states could have gotten the same results with less restrictions. Trump also said the protesters, many of whom were Trump supporters, were treated a little bit rough. So my thoughts on this is you're going to see, um, actually, it's going to get a, a little more heated, a lot more heated, I believe. Um, these lockdown or anti-lockdown measures are going to uh, continue to rise up as people get disgusted around the country with what's going on. And um, people's lives are being destroyed. People's livelihoods are being destroyed. Their businesses are being destroyed. Uh, they're unemployed. Um, money to small businesses hasn't made it to who it's supposed to be going to. But it seems to me that the bailout money always gets to those that really don't need it, which are the big banks, uh, big corporations, people with connections. Uh, but the middle class people and lower get the crumbs, get and not only get the crumbs, but through through um, projects or programs like the, um, you know, to defer your mortgage and all that, that's turning into a big fiasco with people, um, you know, applying for mortgage forbearance. And then, you know, they're told, you know, they owe the whole lump sum after three months. And, and by the way, uh, as soon as you apply for it, it goes as a note against your uh, credit, which will drop your credit score, you know, 75 to 100 points. So it, it's it's a fiasco, and it always seems it's a fiasco for the working stiff, the middle class, uh, those that need it the most, those that make this country run. Small businesses, you know, you know, employ, I think, 57% of the employees in the country and account for a huge portion of, you know, the GDP. So 
my thoughts are the Democrats and those that align themselves with them are going to want to draw this out as long as they can. Uh, their strategy is to divide and conquer. <clears throat> they do that very, very well. Uh, I witnessed it through, uh, you know, I, I've been around for a while, guys. Uh, I've been around through Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, uh, Bush one, uh, Clinton, Bush two, uh, Obama, um, and now um, Donald Trump. So I've I've seen a lot in my lifetime of how things go, and I've seen many many years ago uh, where this country was headed. And one of the great things that the Democrats and the liberals and their their communist socialist mindset is they're experts at dividing and conquering. They're experts at controlling the media. They have a lot of expertise and a lot of um, support in planning and pushing their agenda. Let's put it that way. And it seems like those that disagree with them are always on the defensive. So that's one of the things you have to study uh, when you look at that. They always have you and I on the defensive, whatever whatever topic it's about. Uh, and they change the wording and they use jargon that makes what you're debating always look like it's in their favor. Like, are you for guns or against guns? That's how they'll put, are for guns or against guns? Oh, I'm for guns. No, I'm for rights, my God-given rights. I'm not for, it doesn't matter about for guns or against guns. I'm for my right of self-defense. So that's how they, you know, get people on the right or conservatives. That's how they throw you off. They, they, so you have to be an expert on, you know, throwing it back at them and rewording things and turning the tables on them. And then also, um, being faster to the punch right now, we're always reacting and that's the problem. We're always reacting. And you're going to see uh, around the country as these uh, anti-lockdown rallies continue to go, the left is going to start, and they've already has, I've seen an article on it already, turn this into a white supremacist, Nazis, um, they're disrupting this country, they, don't, they want to spread the virus, they don't want to listen, they don't want to listen to anything. Uh, they're just Nazis and white supremacists. And you're going to hear that over and over and over again until the average schmuck that watches uh, the nightly news, no matter which network you watch, is going to hear that and, uh, you know, placed into their minds. And what's going to happen? It's going to turn into a white supremacist, Nazi, and they're going to and they're going to take the movement, the protest movement and turn it into something that it's not. OK, that's one of the things they're going to do. Another thing I think they're going to do is they're going to step up their game. They have an army. I don't know if you know that. Do you know they have an army? You have saw it. I saw it when Trump was running for president. Antifa, Black Lives Matter and all those groups aligned with them, the women's groups, you know, the pink pussycat hats, all those people. That's their army. And right now they're getting ready uh, to make another move, I believe. So uh, I would say to those out there uh, getting ready to, you know, push back for what's being fostered upon us, because this has gone from the virus to now destroying the economy and keeping it destroyed and ruining ch Trump's chances for reelection and changing everything about how we vote. It's morphing into other things that they've already thought through. So we as conservatives, as Christians and others that belong to this movement of resistance from tyranny have to understand how they operate. And so expect things like I just said, changing of wordings, coverage of the media, always negative, always making up stories, uh, lots of more crisis actors coming on board. You're going to see a lot of things that are going to be off the charts. The crisis actors have been used in shootings and uh, other events, uh, crisis events around the country uh, in the past, and they'll continue to do that. 
I think you're going to see a, you know, Antifa 2.0 hit the streets soon. Um, you're going to see a lot of civil uh, pushback and, you know, possibly more uh, civil, some leading to civil unrest. So the my prognosis of what's ahead does not look um, good. And I'm not saying that just to always be negative. I'm saying that to just call it with it what it is. You have to understand that when a boxer has his opponent on the ropes and he's hurt him and he knows he has an opportunity to knock him out, that he's going to do everything in his power during that round uh, to knock him out. And so we have been de dealt a severe blow in this country through this pandemic, I believe. Um, it has worked as far as uh, the desired effects. It has worked as far as bringing the economy down. It has worked as taking, say, whatever Donald Trump put into place in his three plus years and kind of brought him back to zero again. And so they have a platform now to operate from. And so they're going to take advantage of that. And they are going to, excuse me, they're going to take advantage of that and they're going to use it to their, you know, best ability to knock out, perform the knockout blow. So that's where I think we are now at this juncture on April 20th, uh, 2020. Also want to remind everybody to keep your eyes open as uh, some of these indictments or whatever uh, Attorney General Barr has been investigating and he starts naming names or there starts turning up the heat onto maybe putting some people uh, or bringing some people in for questioning or indicting them on things that were done against the Trump administration earlier when he was elected uh, by the Obama administration. If that happens, expect to see another diversion, a big diversion, uh, another false flag or something like that as early as this week. So keep your eyes open. Let me know what you think. Um, game is on, guys. So when you talk to when you talk to these liberals, socialist Democrats that you know, let them know you mean business. Let them know you know how they operate. Um, and don't fall for their bait. Anthony signing off. Stay ready.